What a wonderful world. The song that we heard bringing Margaret in. Being with you as a family for a number of different occasions, having mum a part of what we did for dad not too long ago, reminds me of the importance of, of getting together as a family, not necessarily under these circumstances all the time, but it is important for us to always remember to be together. So even the meeting at Susan and Paul's place, um, it's good to be with you again. Great conversation about a good woman. And as I was able to, I don't know if you saw the recipe book, it's hard cover, it's about yay big, it's white. Uh, as you go through that book, you see different moments captured on film, like we're going to just scroll for you today. Uh, great pictures of uh, Susan and the boys small, and uh, mom and dad back in their glory, like that great wedding photo that you provided for us. For there are times in our lives when we shine brilliantly, when everything is just perfect, in our role within the lives of others, fully defined. And yet I do believe that even this moment is a perfect moment for mom. A chance for her to shine, a chance for us to give her full credit for all the things that she did. Not just mom as one role, but always a beautiful, kind, generous, hardworking, woman throughout. We're just going to sift and just pull out a couple of gems. We have uh, Susan, uh, Paul, we have uh, something that I'm going to read on behalf of Conrad and then uh, Rick and Reef are coming. There's a few that are, I'm not sure which order, I didn't actually ask, but whoever comes, comes. But those four plus what I'm going to represent in this chapel setting is going to be us sharing these gems. Now the reception, which will take place after our service in, in Graveside, is where the rest of you just chime in with countless stories of your moments with Margaret. She had given her whole life moments to individuals, both mom and dad and the restaurant that they owned, to a community they gave moments. And I think maybe that that's what life is truly about. How many moments did you give those you loved? Did you hold back at any point in time? Moments. For that's what these services are about. 
I remember this moment. I remember that moment. I remember these moments. And that's what you see now. One twenty-fourth of a second captured on film moments. And it's beautiful just to be a part of this day. Now, I did hear a cell phone. If anyone else has a cell phone, if you can turn it to vibration mode uh, or turn it off, that would be appreciated. Uh, it's not so much when I'm speaking, but it's when family's going to come and share that I think we need to give them our undivided attention. And we think of, well, we think of Bert and Margaret. Then we think of three children, seven grandchildren, and a great-grandchild, Brooklyn. Um, we think of generations blessed by her. And if you'd allow me to open in a simple word of prayer, I'm going to ask God to be with us. If you'd bow your hearts and heads, let's pray. Father, one of the greatest gifts you give mankind is a good mother. Thank you that you blessed this family with Margaret's love and dedication and skill, gladness, joy, peace. Thank you that she was so many things to so many people. And as we come today to pay her fitting tribute, allow us this day to receive one more time our daily bread. May you grant family strength and hope and peace and love. And for those gathered with us today, bless them for their dedication to this family's need on this day. Bless us, we pray. Amen. I just want to read something that uh, I do often when it comes to a good mom. And your mom was not just good, she was great. In the pages of scripture, written about uh, 3,500 years ago, someone who put together portions of the wisdom section of the Bible wrote about a woman like your mom. Most theologians would state that this writing is a compilation of the best of women. But your mom nails quite a few of these. So I want to read it. A woman of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies, and her husband, Bert, has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value because she brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax, works with eager hands. She gets up while it is still dark, provides food for her family, sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. Speaks with wisdom, faithful instruction is on her tongue, watches over the affairs of her household. And her children arise and call her blessed her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you, Margaret, surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all her hands have done. Let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Culturally speaking, this is the city gate, a place where those gather for a specific purpose point of reference, meeting, etc. In ancient days, the gates would open. That's where you would congregate. Celebrations were there. We don't have gates. And if we walled the city of Surrey, that would be a lot of wall. But a city gate then is a place of gathering, and that's what we've done. The most significant thing that we do today is gather. We actually came today. Friends, family, came. You put life aside for a moment in order to participate in this life event. That's why we ask cell phones off. We're a closed community. We're going to listen to the stories that are Margaret's greatness. And in all things, as the soul is slightly condensed by pain and by loss, it's actually growing because of joy in the story that you were a part of. This, by the way, is not the end of mom. It's the end of that first chapter of her life. 
I believe she saw dad, saw family on the other side. They welcomed her with open arms. She was young again. Soul was free again. And in all things, we gather just to say thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of our lives. Margaret, thank you for being a blessing. So we have some that are coming now to share. Um, Rick and Reef or Susan yourself? Okay, we're just, I'm going to let order happen. I'm going to read Conrad sometime in all of this. Conrad, thanks for writing stuff for me. It was truly a privilege to be with my mom, holding her hand when she passed. She was always there for me, for her family, and for her friends. As I sat with her, I thought about all the good that her small hands had done over the course of her very long life. My mom was so kind and helpful and if she couldn't do something, then she'd happily volunteer my dad for almost any job. She'd just call Bert, and he'd come, and he'd help her with whatever she wanted. I don't think he ever said no to her. My dad met my mom at a dance near Winnipeg, Manitoba in 1954. She was 18. He was 22. It was love at first sight for my dad. But he didn't know her last name, so he and his friend Reggie spent several weekends searching farms in the area for Margaret. Thankfully for all of us, he found her. Unfortunately, she wasn't as taken with him as he was with her. She told us that quite often. <laughs> Fate stepped in when her sister Carol wanted to date Reggie. My grandfather insisted that Carol could only go on a double date because she was just 16. Carol convinced my mom to date dad as the other couple. Mom said that dad was so kind, thoughtful, and loyal that she fell in love with him. Also, she convinced him to teach her how to drive, which her father would not allow. My mom was always busy. I remember her saying she couldn't understand how anybody could be bored. There was just so much to do. She sewed clothes for us. She made pajamas and quilts for all of her grandchildren. She made a wedding dress for her sister Carol's marriage to Rand. She sewed car, motorcycle, boat seats, GI Joe tents, and Barbie clothes. I remember playing with my granddaughter, Brooklyn, and looking at all of those Barbie clothes, they were each so lovingly made with such attention to detail. She knit sweaters, scarves, hats, and Marvin Mouse mitts for her children, her grandchildren, and her great-granddaughter. Whenever anything needed to be done or fixed, Kyle, who was very young then, would say, just give it to Grandma to knit. She was a hairdresser. She cut our hair, her grandchildren's. She even trimmed a few dogs. She took a course in calligraphy, and she wrote our names in beautiful script on every card envelope. My mom loved people, especially children. She was a great mom to me and my two brothers. I remember her reading stories and playing games with us. She was very artistic. She could draw anything. Ours was the house that all of our friends went to. She and my dad could not have been better or more supportive parents. They welcomed my husband, Paul, and my two sister-in-laws, Reef and Catherine, into our family with open hearts. And she joyfully became the very best grandma to her seven grandchildren. Glenn, Todd, Sarah, Danielle, Jenna, Kyle, and Cole. She cared for my sons, Glenn and Todd, while I was at work. She and my dad took care of my granddaughter, Brooklyn, for several years. Mom was loved as an honorary grandma by many people. It didn't hurt that mom 
sorry, it was a fantastic cook. Her specialties were pierogies, cabbage rolls, meatballs, rouladen, spetzel, bread dumplings. We took a Chinese cooking course together decades ago. That was one of my best ideas ever. She and my dad would cook for days to make a huge feast for the whole family. She also made pickles. She canned fruit. Mom could bake too. Cheesecakes, scones, pies were delicious. For years, she and my dad made apple pies with us every September using the apples from our backyard. Our annual gingerbread house day was a family tradition that started when my eldest son, Glenn, was only 18 months old. And it continued until just a few years ago, a run of almost 40 years. We made and decorated gingerbread houses, merry-go-rounds, trains, and a tree house. My parents loved camping, boating, and fishing. They spent lots of time at Loon Lake with my brothers and their families. They also had a trailer in Harrison across the lane from my brothers where they spent time with their younger grandchildren. They played card games, went for bike rides and ice cream. They'll never forget Grandma's Mickey Mouse waffles. My mom loved Mickey Mouse and the color red, which is why I'm wearing a red top and her Mickey Mouse earrings. She'd be so pleased. She and my dad went to Disneyland several times with the family. My mom loved to walk. The joke was that's because it was her maiden name, Walker. We knew her health was failing when she stopped walking the halls of Westminster House. When she passed, so many people commented on her great sense of humor and her laugh. It was truly remarkable. As a child, my brother Conrad refused to sit under the balcony seats when we went to the movies because my mom would laugh so loud that people would actually throw popcorn at her. <laughs> Sadly, I had forgotten that. I realized that over the last few years, my mom had lost her laugh. She struggled with aging. She was hard of hearing, even with hearing aids. Her poor eyesight deteriorated until she was legally blind. She became forgetful, but she always remembered the people she loved. <laughs> when my dad fell and he broke his hip in 2021, they moved into Westminster House. Our family was so relieved because they were struggling with independent living. My dad loved living there. He was relieved he didn't have to do household chores, including cooking and cleaning. He loved to socialize, and he enjoyed the company of the other residents and the staff. Although my mom appreciated the care, she told me that she felt useless living there. She still wanted to make dinners for friends and family, even though she wasn't able to. We were all heartbroken when my dad passed after Christmas of 2022, but it was the hardest for my mom. She lost her very best friend and her partner for almost 70 years, the person who was always there for her. She was sad and lonely no matter how much time we spent with her. In February, she told me that she just wanted to leave and be with dad. She'd lost her purpose and her will to live. We tried everything, but she slowly faded away. The staff at Westminster House have always been incredibly supportive, and especially through this hard time. We can't thank them enough for being there for my dad, my mom, and our family. They'll always have our deepest gratitude for making this sad time a little bit easier. As I sat with mom at the end, I told her that I'd stay with her, holding her hand, until she was ready to go to dad. I like to believe that he took her other hand and helped her cross over. Thinking that they're together again makes missing them just a little bit easier. How lucky were we to have had them as our parents. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to just read Conrad's and then we'll invite you two to come forward. Thanks. Conrad writes, while we were young, we had motorcycles, snowmobiles, even boats. 
the unwritten rule was that we had to maintain and repair these off-road vehicles. Dad taught us how to do that, as well as some home car, uh, home and car repair, building multiple fences and basements while mom would be inside cooking up a storm. My son Kyle was just a young lad and would come to me to fix or build his toys and I would show him how to do that as my dad did for me. And he once said, you are the fixer. And so I said, then what is mom? And he quickly said, she's, she's the finder. And we traveled to many places with our parents, always had a great time together. We spent years at our trailers at Harrison and Loon Lake cabins with many fond memories. There were always, they were always there for us and we will miss our family fixer. We also miss our finder, my mom, and she did a lot more than find. She loved to take care of everything and more importantly, everyone. That is a tall order. She would cook for days for special occasions or just a family dinner. Chinese food that she took lessons to learn, chicken, co chicken cordon bleu, the best that I've ever had, cabbage rolls, pierogies, many more delicious foods. We have had a lot of those recipes, but no one can make it with as much enthusiasm and love, but yet we'll try. She was also a fixer in a different way than dad. She would sew, knit, draw, cut hair, canned. She would make pies, etc. She was the glue that kept things together. The three of us have truly been blessed to have such awesome parents. And all our friends loved coming over to our house when we were growing up. I think it was because it was always welcoming and you could always stay for a snack, for lunch, or for dinner. There was always room for one or two more. And everything that she did was for others. She always ate last and was the first to clean the dishes, never really relaxed until everyone was content. And she loved a good joke. And everyone knew her laugh, but she hasn't had a good cackle like laugh since dad passed. I'm hoping she's finding peace with dad now. Hope she can laugh loudly, cook, play cards with dad. She must be overjoyed to see him. He must be overjoyed to see her. And we will miss them greatly, but glad they are together again. Love, Conrad. Yeah. That we have the opportunity on this life to enjoy each other as much as mom and dad did is one thing. But to believe that they're enjoying themselves again on the other side is truly amazing to think of. Conrad, thank you. If you guys would come now and just share with us, that would be greatly appreciated. Today we say goodbye to the most wonderful mother, mother-in-law, and grandma. Margaret was truly one of a kind. She was able to brighten up every room with her sassiness, funny phrases, and iconic laugh. She had the biggest heart and always cared deeply about her family and friends. Some of our favorite memories are from the summers with her in Harrison from Mickey Mouse waffles in the morning to playing cards late into the night. Grandma filled our days with adventure, laughter, and lots of ice cream. The world is going to be a little less bright without her in it, but as Grandma would say, except she'd say it in German, what can you do but lay on your stomach and laugh? <laughs> Margaret, Grandma, and Mom, we will miss you. We all feel so privileged. You had such an important, you were such an important person in our lives. We will cherish the memories we made with you and we will love you always.
Thank you. Thank you for coming out today. Margaret Fisher, wife to Bert Fisher. She was the reason I wanted to marry Susan. <laughs> she was. She was part of my two-step process I needed to complete before I would get married. Let me explain. Step one, I started an argument with Susan to see if she would fight fair. Wow, did she ever. <laughs> I was extremely impressed by how she navigated through all my objections about how she perceived my grandma Booth as a child. My grandma was the love of my life. Big win there. Step two, I wanted to meet the parents, because after all, that was who I'd be married to in 20 years down the road. And I really liked her mom's upbeat personality and joyful attitude. I remember her sitting in the living room one day with her legs scrunched up like a happy-go-lucky kid and laughing and enjoying the conversation while making everybody feel welcome in their home. I wanted that upbeat attitude in my life and her laugh. It was one of a kind. Margaret loved a good joke. Margaret loved several things in her life. Kids, making kids happy, laughing kids, feeding kids, anything to do with kids, for that matter. But Margaret loved other things, too. She loved family, food, jokes, and keeping busy. She helped raise all the grandkids and loved them all. She was the glue that held us all together over the years. I have many good memories of Margaret and Bert, and I feel I was blessed to have been welcomed into their family. They made Susan and me very happy every day of our married life, and I continue to be thankful for all the help and support we received. God bless them, and I look forward to one day seeing them again. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I'm wondering what his vows were. I love you, Susan, because I first loved your mom. You know, it's a little weird, but maybe it would work. I feel at times quite saddened at services such as this because we are losing a generation of women that really did have everything in life that they would ever want or that they could ever create. We're getting now to the point, and, and sorry for everyone female under the age of 30, but back in the day there wasn't an M&M meat shop. There wasn't a Walmart. If you ate it, it was because you either grew it, your husband, a good shot, would have killed it, somebody would have butchered it, you would have froze it in your freezer, you would have had a recipe passed down generations and you were competent to complete that recipe. Now we just buy stuff. We talked about pies, right? Apple pies from the yard. That's old school. That's OG. And we're losing all that ability. Not because it's not available. I think it still is. You can Google anything. But where is the want of creating or the want of preparing or the want of baking? That's what we're missing now, male and female. We have generations that do not have the want to do this anymore. 
Margaret was not without want. That's what she was complaining about in, in Westminster House. I feel useless here because everyone was doing everything for her, yet she was so capable throughout the decades to complete it herself. Yet you get to a place where the soul begins to long to be released. And you can look back, or as the psalmist David states, he prepares me a table in the presence of that which I fear. He anoints my head with oil, my cup runs over. There would have been a point when mom looked at that cup of her kindness, generosity, industry. She would have saw it run over and she would have said, I did more than I ever could have imagined. If she spins the cup, she sees it pouring still over and she would have said, I can't believe how much I was loved, more than I ever imagined. And that's what we do here. We say thanks because of all that she did. We think, we ponder in the heart and soul what it means to want to serve. And Margaret served. Again, if she couldn't do it, she would yell Bert and Bert would do it. It's an amazing little ace in the hole, you know. Your mom and dad loved each other for seven decades, basically. That's an amazing story in itself. She was loving, lovely, loved. And ladies and gentlemen, if you can boil all the chaos into some simplicity, it would be that. Loving, lovable, and loved. That's why with grateful hearts we come today. That's why with confidence and steadfastness we can lay her to rest. We know that she accomplished great things. She heard on the other side of life, well done, Margaret, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into your place of rest and peace, knowing that you accomplished more than you could ever imagine. And she did it from beginning to end. That's why when I uh, get to the other side, going to knock on your mom and dad's door. I'm going to sit and have progas and cabbage rolls. I'm sure they're unbelievable. Chicken cordon bleu, I'll probably ask as well. I just want to meet these people for real. I want to see them in their element. I only hear stories or see them late in life. But oh, to have experienced days with them. That would just elevate my soul. And yet I come into your lives at a particular time and place. There is duty attached to officiating. We have to take Margaret right across the finish line as we did with Bert. And that's what we're going to do next. We go from chapel service to graveside. Now, those that wish to just make their way down the hall into the tea room, you can pour yourself a drink, coffee, wait for us. We will not be long. But if you're willing to come, then we'd have you just participate with us. Thinking of the importance of family first. Family wishes to do this duty. So for the most part, I think most of you will just make your way to the tea room. But again, if you wish to follow, you can. And with love and duty and dedication, we will lay her to rest. Trusting that her spirit is already safe in God's keeping. In a green shady valley of modest Violet grew. Margaret's stock was slightly bent. She hid her head as if to hide from view. And yet she was such a lovely flower and her colors bright and fair and would have graced any other rosy bower instead of just being there. Yet thus she was content to bloom. Her modest tints arrayed and there diffused a sweet perfume always within that silent shade. Family let us Today go to this pretty flower in the valley we will see. And then learn to grow as sweetly as she did with love and humility. We're going to learn one last time what it means 
to be truly loving and lovable and loved. We're going to hear some exit music. Margaret's going to be pulled through the door and into that which is the coach. And then we're going to go to the graveside. Again, most of you, if you can make your way into the tea room, that would be greatly appreciated. Those that wish to follow us may. And we won't be long. We'll be back. Then, of course, we're going to break bread, have fellowship. Stories are going to be shared. Thank you for coming, for being a blessing to this family. Svetlana, if you would, with Alex, come and give us further directions as to what we do. Of day, I like the dark in 